Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary Languish, empowering you to reach your artistic potential and inspiring you to follow your artistic voice. So today I'm gonna to be talking about this stack of books. So personally, I'm not like a huge reader, but my husband's a huge reader and therefore he gets these books, a lot of which apply to both of us, um, that are really good books. And so I've read, I'm a slow reader and so it takes me a while, but I've read quite a few books and I wanted to share with you my top 10 books that I think every artist should at some point read or purchase or look at. Books make great gifts, so maybe have an idea for yourself for the holidays or for your birthday, maybe for someone else, but let's jump in. First off, I want to start with books that have been really inspiring for me personally as an artist. So a real kick in the pants, if you will. So we'll start with some of those. So the first set is Austin Kleon's set of three books, Steal Like an Artist, Show Your Work, and Keep Going. All three of these are perfect for any creative person. You don't have to be a painter or an artist specifically. You can be a writer, photographer, whatever, but these have been awesome. A few reasons why I like them, they're really easy reads. They've got some illustrations, um, they're fun, they're simple, to they're to the point. And all three of these really challenge you as an artist to just generate ideas is really what this one's about. Not being afraid to share your what you create with the world and you can learn from that process to when you get stuck or need inspiration, this one's a great one. So all three of them, I highly, highly recommend. I don't necessarily, I read this one recently Recently, so obviously it's more fresh in my mind, but all of them are really good. Next, we have The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. This one is really about fighting resistance with a capital R and getting to work. So getting your butt on the chair, not letting things stop you, getting stuff done. It's about learning to fight the inner battle of getting your creative work accomplished. A warning, this one has some language and some reference to some topics that kids probably shouldn't read, so it's best for adults, but I highly recommend this one as well. Art and Fear. This one is really good and it's been a while since I've read it. Like the title says, it's about overcoming your fears of creating art, whatever that may be. So it's very similar to the war of art in terms of fighting the resistance, the things that are going to stop you, but it's more fear-based. So like, what are things that actually scare you about your work? Is it showing your work? Is it displaying, you know, those types of things. It also talks about why art doesn't get made and how to overcome some of those things that stop us. The Practicing Mind by Thomas M. Sterner is a great one. And it's definitely, from what I remember, not specifically geared towards creatives. It's just geared toward anyone who wants to spend time working on things. And the point of it is to learn to love the process. So a lot of times the stuff that we do, especially creatively, you get stuck in like, I don't want to do the process, I want the end result. This one has some even practical things for how to enjoy the process along the way, enjoy the journey and not get caught up with just the goal. I've loved this one. Um, I felt like the first time I read it, I was like, it, it changed the way I looked at life and the way I processed the things I was doing instead of being this this goal oriented process or a goal oriented and only thinking about the prize and the end results. This really helped me to find joy in the everyday in the process. So highly recommend this one. It also helps you learn to focus and be diligent with your work. Next we have the biography. Biography? Yeah, of Leonardo da Vinci. Now this is a honking book. So obviously when I was thinking of reading this, I thought I'm not gonna finish this thing, but I did. It's extremely inspiring. It has so much information about Leonardo da Vinci that like way more than you'd learn in a class or even just like trying to research on your own. Like it's just got so much good information. It was super inspiring and I learned so much about Leonardo. So if you're just interested in something a little bit different, not so much like self-help, but just reading about someone's life, this is a great one. Daily Rituals. Now this one is very interesting and I, I really love it and I haven't finished it. My husband and I have been reading it together and um, there's short little segments here and they basically go through sort of the everyday mundane process, um, daily 
rituals of different creative people. So we got poets, we've got it says composers and painters and choreographers and playwrights and sculptors and filmmakers and scientists. Like it goes through different people's daily lives. Just short little snippets of what like, you know, Monet's life looked like on an everyday. Like when does he get his work done? When does he take a coffee break? When does he, you know, those types of things. It's just inspiring short glimpses into creative people's everyday lives. How they get their work done, when they get their work done, if they get their work done, all those things. Super cool book. Now, if you like to draw or you have been drawing, this next one is a great one. Now, I have both the workbook and the actual book. Um, both I highly recommend right now to show you. I just have text the workbook, but it's Drawing on the Rights of the Brain with Betty Edwards. Now, years ago, long time ago, when I was like 10, 12 years old, I took a class on drawing on the rights of the brain, which was all the information from this book. I learned to draw realistically because of Betty Edwards' techniques that she teaches in her book. So highly recommended. I love the full textbook because she goes through the different things to learn about the brain and how that relates to drawing and how that can improve your drawing if you use the correct side of your brain. Fascinating stuff. I've actually been teaching it for 12 plus years myself. Huge, huge, huge benefits from this. So if you want to draw better or you want to just understand different ways of drawing and thinking, this is a great one. It's also great if you want to teach drawing to other people. This next one is called Color, a workshop for artists and designers. I actually have a full video review of this book down in the description below if you want to check it out. This one has been awesome. I was looking for a color theory book that went more in depth um, because I love color and I'm an artist. So if you work in color, I highly recommend you picking up a copy of this book for yourself because it is awesome. I learned so much about color and color theory and tons of stuff I didn't know and it reiterated other stuff that I was finding out on my own. Great book. So it talks about how color mixes and how color interacts. And it's got tons of illustrations in color in the book. These last two are not necessarily like ones you'd read through. They're kind of like coffee table books. I've had them for a long time. They were either, they actually, both of them were gifted to me. They make great gifts for artists. The first one is The Creative Block. Get unstuck, creative block, discover new ideas. And this one basically consists of interviews with artists on kind of their process and specifically their process on how to get out, out of artist block um, or creative block. So super interesting. Obviously if you are stuck on something, this is a great one to just like flip to, have in the studio and be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna read this one. And it, just reading one is super inspiring. So great, great studio book. And last but not least is also another great coffee table type book. And that is the Pantone 20th Century in Color. Again, this was a gift and I absolutely love this book. If you have a fascination with color in general, this is a great book. It also assigns, you know, color, color palettes to specific years. So it's 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 great. I've I've found it super inspiring. I've used it for color palettes in in paintings before. I've used it um, for like little contests or for my live streams to come up with some random idea, flip to a random page, use that color palette and create something interesting. Again, it's also just beautiful and fun to look at. So it's again, a great studio book, great coffee table book. Um, very, very interesting. Highly recommend this one as well. Hey guys, there you have it. Those are my top 10 favorite art books or creative books or books for artists. All the links for each of these books are down in the description below if you wanna go check them out for yourself. And again, books make great gifts. So perfect for giving to an artist friend or yourself or putting it on the Christmas list. But reading is a great thing to be doing as an artist. I know it can be hard, especially for me, to find time to do such a thing, but it pays off. I learn so much. I get so excited and pumped up and inspired. So I highly recommend that you guys check out some of these books and I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more art content like this. And we'll see you next time, guys. Bye.